Hello everyone, today in this video we will fight against the Admas character of our world around us and today we will deal with the myth, very popular in the European and Northern American culture, the myth of a noble savage. So it can be also uh, presented as a noble wild man, noble savage. This concept some people say that appeared first time in one of the screenplay of John Dryden, great English poet, but actually it was popularized in the most uh, influential, uh, in the most influences on the culture it got, thanks to works of uh, uh, Jacques Rousseau. Jacques Rousseau was a quite, uh, I would say, <laughs> peculiar, uh, peculiar uh, French philosopher in the Enlightened Era. He was, of course, uh, presenting this myth that wild people uh, are noble by nature because they live close to nature. Wild, I mean primitive, so uh, savage as older English but beautiful uh, f uh, word from French would depict this term that savage people are more noble, more simple, they are living better life because they live together uh, with the rhythm of nature, so they are not spoiled by uh, civilization, they are not so complex and not so uh, hypocrite as people from the cities, from the civilized nation and so on and so on. And uh, Rousseau was promoting this idea and surprisingly, if one looks at his private lives, one sees that um, seemingly he was promoting many ideas, idealistic ones, in contrast to his own deeds he committed in his own life, because for instance, his own children he sent to the orphanage and he was not taking care of them, and one of his child, as long as he was taken care of, uh, he uh, raised according to the old rules of uh, Qatar perfecti, heresy from the mid high middle ages in France, and he raised sp speechless uh, child completely neglected, and this child didn't finish well. So maybe uh, this was one of the reasons why uh, Mr. Russo uh, was writing so much of idealistic content because his own life was not was very distant from these ideals he was spreading. How common is it? It's very common among intellectuals. So uh, this myth of the uh, of the noble savage is actually uh, later uh, after the enlightened era in the first uh, in the first half and second half of the 20th century especially second half of the 20th century uh, spread by many especially left wing oriented anthropologists and uh, historians of culture which is not true the best example uh, to show you the reality be behind the life of such uh, savage people, one would say primitive people, who, of course with no pejorative meaning, primitive in terms of uh, the level of civilization they they have, technological civilization, let's say. So th there is something like uncontacted tribe, tribes, still in some places, in Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Amazon, Amazon jungle, and on some islands, like we have the archipelago called Andaman, An Andaman Island. Islands, these islands are located in between Birman, Birma coast, Myanmar coast nowadays, because nowadays Birma is called Myanmar, Myanmar coast and the northern coast of Sumatra. And officially this archipelago is administered by India. And there is one small island located a little bit uh, on the west from the main island of this archipelago called North Sentinel. And North Sentinel officially is also administered by India, but this uh, island is about 7,8 kilometers long and 7 kilometers wide, so not so much, and it's densely covered by tropical forest. 
and we know that this island is inhabited by a group of locals and these locals as history said we have some records they were never friendly to the newcomers and their welcoming was uh, always very similar uh, <laughs> because they were welcoming newcomers with arrows and killing them if they managed so uh, first time this uh, island was discovered and observed by European sailors and most likely British in about 1771 but they only made some observation uh, lo located some uh, noticed some local wild men savage not so noble and uh, they they just le left they just went away somewhere else later in 1876 merchant uh, ship of uh, Indians uh, under the British India lost the uh, course and uh, they had uh, actually one, one would say emergency docking to the beach of uh, the North Sentinel Island and they were in quotation welcomed by locals with arrows and sticks they made a uh, fortress out of the sh uh, of the uh, ship that was out of order and survived no one was killed and later uh, quite quickly other british ship uh, found them and took them away uh, later it was for long silence in the 1890 uh, the british governor of the uh, andaman island organized the expedition they actually met uh, locals from the North Sentinel, kidnapped four children and two uh, and one elderly couple. The elderly couple, they transported them to other Andaman Island. The elderly couple died quite quickly, seemingly from the disease they never encountered before. And this British guy actually didn't know what to do with them. So they sent children back and what he wrote in his diary, I think it's very appropriate that uh, seemingly we should leave these people alone because the language they speak is n not understood even by other uh, locals of Andaman Island it's completely isolated and they are very hostile to the newcomers and for a long time it was peace but in the 20th century there were some uh, trials to contact them even National Geographic in 1974 with some Indian investigators anthropologists were trying to uh, make a movie about the, the, this island and these people and they were approaching them giving them gifts on a beach on a beach of course but uh, the locals uh, just shared them their arrows and one of the camera operator lost his eye that's why project was abandoned Mm, but we have some videos uh, showing us local people uh, really actually practically naked only with their arrows and uh, very hostile to the external world but there was also Indian an anthropologist Mr. Taunil Pandit uh, who was investigating the Andaman po island populations including population in Northern Sentinel for long and 1967 to 1992 he was studying them uh, approaching the island from the different sites leaving the gifts on the coast like food like coconuts some uh, living animals some fruits and other stuff and uh, he had st different adventures was also attacked several times but nothing happened once they left even living pig for the uh, locals so locals actually slaughtered the pig and just buried it, buried it uh, immediately after it stopped bleeding and they took only fruits uh, mainly coconuts and uh, in the January 1991 miracle happened because they uh, the locals seemingly got used to Mr. Pandit and his team coming to them and giving them gifts that they started trusting them and they approached them on the beach and there are some historical photos how uh, one of the worker, female worker of Mr. Pandit, uh, co-worker, uh, his former student, 
I went to the beach and uh, started interacting with the locals. They even gave her their children uh, to hold on her hands. And Mr. Pandit, there is a historical photo that he enters the water, uh, um, actually shallow water at the beach and gives the coconut to the uh, local representative of local men, warrior, and they are actually uh, holding their hands through the coconut. So this is first friendly contact. But one year later, Mr. Pandit uh, went for the retirement, well deserved, very good and brave anthropologist, and Indian government, because as I mentioned, Andaman Islands, including North Sentinel, formally uh, are administered by Indian government, decided to uh, just create three mile no-go zone around the island and the uh, Indian fleet is patrolling this area just not to interrupt, uh, not to disturb locals. Of course sometimes uh, strange things happen like uh, tired and drunken fishermen, their boat, they, they lost the control over their boat and boat floated to the island and they just landed on the beach and were killed by locals and they were impaled and their dead bodies were exposed on the beach to the external world. So we see that these uh, savage people are not so noble, later I will tell why, and uh, now uh, there was a American guy in 2018, a Christian missionary of Chinese origin, he wanted to convert these Sentinelese people. We even don't know how numerous the population is. We only have some rough estimates on the basis of nothing. He wanted to convert them on Christianity. Uh, and he bribed uh, local fishermen. They took him on the island. Three times he interacted with the locals. They just warned him, uh, throwing stones and uh, arrows into his direction. Don't approach, we don't want any contacts. He was stubborn and he even wrote in his diaries that he wanted martyrdom. So <laughs> at one point he got it. They simply killed him with arrows and his body is still there because uh, even the US Navy was trying to uh, just take his body out of the island because he was a citizen, of course but uh, locals were so aggressive and attacking anyone who uh, just landed on the island that they gave up. They didn't want to hurt them, interact with them and, shared, and share any diseases with these people to hurt them, which is wise. And uh, so having, there were also in, still in the 19th century some examples of some prisoners escaping to this island. The, they were also found dead and killed uh, with arrows and if they were still alive also slaughtered like uh, animal in the slaughterhouse so we know that foreigners do not want contacts only after mm, uh, 24 years Mr. Pandit uh, managed to make first peaceful contact with them Mr. Pandit and his team great anthropologist still alive almost 90 years old and we know that uh, this is uh, very great achievement and we should leave these people alone and now one should think uh, what's the real truth behind it the real truth behind it is that people living in a very primitive conditions within the harmony uh, with nature as one would say they have really difficult life uh, all of their uh, efforts are focused on sur survival uh, like uh, like uh, hunting, uh, collecting uh, food, other foods, important materials to live which are very sparse, uh, fighting with parasites and diseases that decimate them and make their life shorter. Uh, great study uh, done by Mr. Levi Strauss, a French-speaking Belgian anthropologist of Jewish origin who was studying uncontacted tribes in Amazonia. Uh, showed that among such people there are no mental disorders which is obvious in my opinion because these people wouldn't make it uh, they w it's not possible for them to survive these people are really focused on survival in a very difficult conditions and there is no place for uh, being noble for some honorable behaviors and so on because these people are really fighting for survival every day fighting with diseases with with uh, shortages of food with shortages of basic materials uh, like 
like uh, some bedding materials even because everything in especially tropics is so sparse and and there is no place of being noble and we see that majority of these tribes not only the one on the northern sentinel island uh, which i mentioned within the andaman archipelago are not so happy to have contact with uh, anyone else than themselves because uh, in my opinion it's because of the diseases they can just get of course they are not aware that these are the diseases but they can simply uh, make connection between the fact that after the contacts with different people they regard as a different tribe something bad was happening with their health so they don't want it and uh, we see that maybe 20 30 thousand years ago majority of people or a huge part of humanity was living in such a conditions so we see that the life of uh, savage people primitive people is not so noble as literature showed to us because it cannot be they simply cannot afford being so noble in quotation because they are fighting every day with uh, cruel uh, powers of nature for their own survival and they are in most cases at the edge of survival and uh, we need to take into account uh, all of these facts so we see that uh, this myth of noble as uh, uh, savage it's only a myth like many other uh, myths spread by especially leftist ide idealists and and these myths are making more harm than good as we see this uh, poor and actually also stupid uh, chinese american missionary uh, who uh, tried to do a good thing but uh, not with the proper people not at the proper time and he paid really high price for it and uh, ri ridicule his own values unintentionally all the best have a nice day bye